Wired, a media company historically associated with their coverage of the digital revolution, has released a video on the science of slowing down aging featuring Dr. Morgan Levine. The video has amassed well over half a million views in two weeks, performing better than many of the other videos on their channel. And this comes on the heels of another series, On the Future of Aging, released by Wired UK. Is this a sign of a growing interest in the science of longevity? And can we expect more content on this subject? We'll explore the possibilities in this episode of Lifespan News. Dr. Morgan Levine just recently announced that she would be leaving her position at Yale, where she served as an assistant professor in the Yale School of Medicine and founder of the Laboratory for Aging and Living Systems to take a position as founding principal investigator of Altos Labs, the cellular reprogramming-focused startup that just exited stealth mode with $3 billion in funding, reportedly from investors including Jeff Bezos. Wired actually released two videos featuring Dr. Levine within a small window. In the first video, an episode of their ongoing series Tech Support, she spent 17 minutes answering aging-related questions from Twitter. In the second video, she provided a general overview of concepts that are often discussed within the longevity community, but might be unknown to those outside of it, such as the difference between chronological age and biological age, senescent cells and senolytics, the hallmarks of aging, aging clocks, and blue zones. If you want more in-depth explanations on any of these topics, we've linked to some of our past content on them in the video description. The reactions to these Dr. Levine videos was largely positive, which isn't always the case when proponents of longevity are featured in media that predominantly reaches an audience outside of the core community. Reaction was also positive to Wired UK's videos on longevity, which have been viewed far fewer times than the Levine videos, but still received a warm reception. It seems clear that there are audiences that are interested in and will support this type of content, and it's great to see an outlet such as Wired getting into this. Wired was created in the early 1990s, when co-founders Louis Rossetto and Jane Metcalf decided to make a consumer magazine version of Electric Word, a technology magazine that they were involved with that was popular among academics and industry insiders. Wired sought to be the rolling stone of cutting-edge technology, and they were on the forefront of covering the digital revolution. Ownership has changed since then, and the company has certainly branched out into featuring more celebrities and pop culture content in addition to its original tech-heavy focus. But the fact that a publication that built its success on identifying and capitalizing on emerging trends and industries is now creating content on life extension and receiving positive feedback is a great sign. And that original Wired co-founder, Jane Metcalf, is following a similar path. She started another publication, Neolife, which seeks to do for the neobiological revolution what Wired did for the digital revolution. I had the opportunity to speak with Jane on an episode of the Future Grind podcast, and here's how she explained it to me. Neolife is very inspired by Wired um, because I realized at a certain moment that what I was experiencing and, and curious about had so many similar feelings to what I was experiencing in the 80s prior to the run-up of the digital revolution. And, you know, what happened was I became very interested in health for a variety of reasons. I'd had my own struggles with health, but when my parents started to experience cognitive decline as well as a uh, breakdown in mental health, so I started just researching, you know, what, what can I do to help my parents? What I discovered was how technology has just blown up what is happening in the health sphere and in biology, you know, and life sciences writ large. And I met people at the forefront of genetics and neuroscience and longevity studies and the microbiome. And, you know, they all had the same story, which is, you know, for years I've been interested in this, but it wasn't until advanced imaging came along or big data or machine learning or 3D printing or neurostimulation, you know, or whatever the technology was that suddenly unlocked this ability to see and understand the biological systems they were working with so much better. You know, when I was at these conferences, I was realizing I used to think that computer engineers were the most powerful people in the world. But then I met these MDs and PhDs who, in addition to their digital skills, had, you know, 15 years of deep learning about, you know, the very complex biological systems that they have to work within. 
And, you know, with these tools, that's even more powerful because now we're actually altering evolution. And so to me, it felt extremely similar. And yet same tool, sort of like it's this is the next phase of the digital revolution. The bottom line is we're talking about the difference between life and death. And so the risk reward ratio is quite different. So it seems that one of the original founders of Wired, as well as its current leadership, which built their brands on the digital revolution, are now turning at least some of their attention to the biological revolution. And I don't blame them because this is going to be the next big thing. Expect to see more life extension content in larger, more pop culture and mainstream outlets. That's a sign of the success that we are having as a community and of the growing interest in this topic. If you want more of this and perhaps deeper dives than you're likely to get from some of the other outlets, make sure to subscribe here. I'm Ryan O'Shea and we'll see you next time on Lifespan News.